some true blue glass shows up at an antique market. You'll, I think you'll enjoy this one. This is uh, part three of the Prudhomme's Antique Market. And, and uh, there's also a flea market during the um, warmer weather. So this is the first part. We're going in and going downstairs. So this is the street sign you'll see out some, you can even see it from the QEW. These are the buildings on the outside that aren't in use at the moment. They, the buildings may have something in them, but this is the actual building we're going to go into today in this video. Welcome, I'm Hawaiian Shirt Pup. Sometimes with others, I visit a variety of antique, vintage, and thrift shops within Southern Ontario. Sometimes we don't get anything. Come tour with me vicariously. The uh, basement area is interesting. It's got uh, a variety of different vendors. They each have a defined area, whether it's just a shelf or a bookcase or a, a whole room. So you'll see uh, selection of different things you may find similar things in more than one room we'll also be going to the uh, first floor above ground in this video as well so we'll, we won't get to the, uh, the top two we may not even finish the ground the first floor as they'll call it So we have some coppery items. We saw some cast aluminum hearts there, some uh, tobacco tins, and this is an accordion type of thing. Yes, it's an accordion. I was able to grab this image from the video and I enhanced it as best I could. I think you can make out enough of it. If you're really interested, you can go and visit the uh, location itself. Some other collectibles including uh, in the toy section some of these are kind of pushing the toy limits in my opinion but that's that's me may not be you uh, battery charger mixed in with uh, old glassware I think those were magazines or co no comics probably in those boxes so you have a whole pile of different things now I'm not sure if this was musty or not. Uh, some rooms may have been, so that may affect whether or not you want to deal with uh, ephemera, especially paper-based stuff. And even LP covers, which we'll be seeing in a, in a, in a bit along here. A lot of ceramics, plastics. Yeah, some interesting melange of uh, objects. There was, I thought maybe Westwood Avenue might be interested in this one, but uh, she says no. Uh, as you can see, they have recorded music here and probably some VHS. Or eight? No, those may have been eight tracks. Um, so we have a variety of formats available here. The LPs, um, you will see a sign for what they're priced at unless otherwise marked. There's a lot of LPs. Um, the basement is generally very dry, but I can't speak for it continuously. So the records are $3 each or as priced. Obviously there are some that are known to be higher value.
although condition may affect the prices on some of the higher value ones. There are also some discs that were, the, were not even inside of a sleeve. Yeah, the place was fairly busy considering it was early January in this video. It wasn't snowy, it was nice weather in that respect, but... Uh, I mean, it is Saturday, and they're only open actually on sat on the weekends you can s check the sign or the google maps for the specific days of the week or even the sign that we saw earlier um well, some old girly magazines so here we are wandering through more of the comics. Some interesting alternatives there. Now we took a slightly closer look at this set of uh, CDs and so on. And a small ball peen hammer. Just randomly sitting in, in out there on a shelf. So there you saw a sign, um, there's not a lot of staffing wandering around, um, I think you'll find them on, on the first floor, and uh, they're a bit different in that there are some vendors that are in their booths, not very many of them that I found, but on the first floor and and the second floor that you might find them more often this one uh, it appears that uh, I guess the person named Ryan is looking after a number of vendors some older ceramics and glass bits here and there and here we're on the first floor at this point. There's more windows on the first floor. There's the blue, the blue glassware. The same room also had their uranium glass which we'll be seeing in a bit. But we're going to another room in between. There's some nice collection of vintage radios and some turntables as well more than likely these are tube type but there's also some early transistor ones you'll be seeing one of those it's interesting that they used to uh, denote how many transistors they had in them because they were discrete pieces nowadays we're talking the huge numbers of transistors in the integrated circuits so how the world has changed since the early transistors this one room had primarily oriental art and other objects an interesting uh, specialization. But I'm sure it helps them focus a lot better. For the unity of the empire, there was, uh, there was a plate there for that. And you'll see that f uh, in a, a fixed photo in a bit. I think this was a room that I came into after being upstairs as well. For the unity of the empire, UAE, UE, United Empire Loyalists, folks that came to Canada from the US once the American Revolution appeared to be going for independence. 
there are rooms of furniture nice looking wood finished furniture I know there's a lot of folks who currently like to get the uh, painted out furniture but this is what they actually should have looked like if they hadn't gotten damaged I understand when there's uh, pieces of furniture where the the woods actually been damaged so you actually will will uh, save a piece of furniture from getting thrown out yes there are antiques there and some old toys and cameras including the uh, Kodak instant camera which eventually lost to Polaroid on a in a patent suit there's another one of those Kodak instant cameras I actually like them better than the Polaroids I have a bit of a grudge against Polaroids because they kept changing their format and film it, was, it became impossible to buy the film for some of their for, for some of their cameras and it didn't last very long in the stores even. So we ended up with a piece of uh, uh, hardware that was quite useless, sadly. Here's the uranium ga glass. We saw a glimpse of it earlier. Here we're going to have a slightly better view of it. In the meantime, we're looking around the rest of this booth. And uh, yeah, there's some really, really, really interesting items. Here's the uranium glass. Uh, it's called that because under black light it glows a, a color. In this case it was green. Um, without the black light it just appears to be clear glass. It could have another color, but once it's irradiated with ultraviolet it will glow a different color. And green is not the only color, as I've been told by Westwood Avenue. This one had a whole collection of uh, jewelry of various sorts. Some of it is, well, primarily costume, but some of it is a higher collectible value than others. And they had the items even in the hallway from room to room. And they are signs, pieces of art, things of that nature. And then you have complete rooms of the. Well, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. We'd appreciate a thumbs up, a, a like in other words, and a, maybe even a subscribe from you. And if you put the mark on the bell, you'll get notified of the next up video. Thanks a lot, folks. Bye-bye.